What's up everybody? Welcome back to Mohawk Motors. My name is Jason. So today's video, I want to show you, I guess I'll call it a trick, a method, a way that you can start a Gen 3 LS engine in a truck or SUV without having to have the key. And uh, on these trucks, it's actually pretty simple and you don't need anything special to do it. So I do want to put the disclaimer out there that, you know, this is to use on your own vehicles. Uh, if you've misplaced the key and you just need to move it, or maybe you're in the junkyard and you want to see if something will run, but you don't have a key to it or uh, whatever the case may be. But this is purely for demonstration purposes. This is to help you, you know, verify that an engine runs or, you know, worst case, move one of your own vehicles out of the way if you're unable to find the key or maybe you're selling something and you just want to demonstrate that it does run even if you're not able to start it up using the key for whatever reason so this is my 2003 2500 hd that i use to haul my donor vehicles haul the leftovers to the scrap yard i mean it's a workhorse that's what i use it for and it's 99.9 percent .9 of the time it's hooked to a trailer towing a trailer around so I'm gonna use this one uh, in my experience all of the gen 3 LS engines this works on so anything with a, a 4.8 a 5.3 or a 6 liter from 1999 all the way through the 2007 classic before the body style changed this works and uh, like I said, you don't need anything special. I'm gonna use, I'm using pieces of a paper clip, guys. Like, I've got three little pieces of paper clip that I bent into a horseshoe, horseshoe shape. And that's all you need to do this. So, like I said, here's our, here's our engine compartment. It's a 2003 six liter. Uh, and where we need to get to is under our, our fuse panel here in the engine compartment. So you pull your cover. Now you're gonna to need to remove three relays. And one of the things I love about GM is they put your relay map, your fuse map right on the inside of the cover. We're going to pull the fuel pump relay, the starter relay, and the main ignition relay, which in this truck, it's a gas engine, it is number five. So all the way over here on the side. So I'm going to pull those three relays out. I'm going to explain to you really quickly how a relay actually works. And then we're going to start this thing. All right, so I've got my fuel pump relay. Starter relay. And ignition relay. A little note here, when you pull your relays out, they do go in there's a right way and a wrong way to put them in. Even though the pin pattern is symmetrical, it'll fit either way. There is a, there's a, the way they should go in and then there's backwards. And I'll show you that. All right, so on any relay I've ever used or seen, they all have, I just call it the map of how the relay functions, typically on the side of the case somewhere. So using this relay here, there's a quick overview of how it works. Now, all the ones I've dealt with, terminal 30 and terminal 87, those are your two terminals for your large load, whatever it may be. Uh, these relays I have pulled out, one of them, 30 and 87, is gonna be the main power supply to the fuel pump. The other, 30 and 87, is the main power supply to the ignition on. And then the third one, the uh, starter relay, 30 and 87, is gonna be the actual exciter wire to the starter solenoid, right? Now your other two pins down here, 85 and 86, those are your control side of the relay. And what they have here in the middle is a small electromagnet. You use typically much lighter gauge wire on your control side, because all you have to do 
is bring your power to a little electromagnet that's inside the relay here. And then typically the other side goes to your switch and then the other side of your switch goes to ground. When you turn that switch on, it completes the circuit, allowing electricity to flow through the electromagnet, which then makes the magnetic field that pulls down the contact on your primary circuit, your load circuit. When it pulls that contact shut, now you have a larger current, a larger draw being energized using that contact. When you turn your switch back off, it stops the flow of electricity through the electromagnet, thus eliminating your electromagnetic field and allowing this arm to spring back open. Typically, they're, you know, it's spring loaded to hold in the open. Now they do make two types of relays. They make normally open, which is what this is. That means when they're when the control circuit is turned off, the load circuit is open. And they make normally closed. Those are the opposite. When the control circuit is off, the load circuit is on. It's complete. Now also to note here, and I'm not sure if it's going to show up in the camera, but on all the relays I've dealt with down here on the bottom side, it's molded into them which terminal is which. So this is my 30, this is 87, this is 85, and this is 86. Now let's get down to how you actually do this, right? So as we saw in our relay, 30 and 87 are the load terminals. So I'm gonna use my paper clip to connect 30 and 87. And based on how the relay goes in, that's 30, that's 87. And you can hear the PCM, everything powers up. In these drive-by-wire engines, it's easy to tell because you can hear the uh, throttle body do a self-test. Off, listen on okay i find paper clips work really well for this because they're almost the same thickness as these pins so they stay in place really nicely so my ignition is on the next thing i need to power up is my fuel pump now my fuel pump is laid the same way 30 and 87 opposite corners got that energized can you hear that I have fuel moving through the fuel rail. So now, as far as the computer and everything knows, the key is turned on. It has fuel supply, it has power to all the ignition coils, ejectors, everything else. So all we need to do is spin the engine over and it'll start. Same terminals again, 30 and 87. And there it is. When you're ready to turn it off, just pull your paper clip off the ignition. Shuts it right off. Pull your fuel pump as well. That's it guys. It's really on these, <laughs> honestly, it's kind of frighteningly simple. Let's, let's do it one more time just to, in case you missed it the first time. So here we are, I've got my ignition relay Pin 30, pin 87, I've got ignition power, fuel pump relay, pin 30, pin 87, I've got fuel flowing, starter, starts right up, easy peasy. That's it, it's really very simple. Once you've done your test and you're ready to put it back together, just use your little map, GM in their wisdom here, even mark the terminals for you so you can get your relay put back in correctly. If you were to put your relay in, you know, 180 degrees off of where it should be, instead of controlling that larger electrical load with the, the load side of the relay, 
you're just going to be running that through the electromagnet. Um, depending on the size of the load, it may not work at all. Um, or it may just burn your relay up very quickly. So use your little road map to make sure you get your relays put back in the way they're supposed to be. Boom. Like nothing ever happened. In case you're worried that this is gonna be harmful to the engine, the computer, the starter, the fuel pump, any of those things, this will not hurt any of those things. It's completely harmless. Like I said, the computer, the engine, it doesn't know any different of you just turning the key to the on start run position, right? So you'll still be able to use your key just like you were before once you put all the relays back in. No problem, no big deal. So you can use that to start an engine up, hear it run, even if you don't have the key. Now that said, in a vehicle equipped with an automatic transmission, the shifter interlock is still going to be engaged. Uh, you would either need to defeat the shifter interlock somehow, or have the key turn the key to the run position like normal operation to get the shifter interlock disengaged so you can actually shift the transmission into reverse, neutral drive, etc., etc. In a manual transmission vehicle, there's really a... I mean, you could more or less just start it up and drive away. So if you have something, maybe this is a good little uh, give yourself an added anti-theft feature somewhere. I actually get a lot of vehicles with aftermarket anti-theft systems in them because of this information. And uh, like I said, this is for you to use to start an engine for demonstration purposes, whether you're selling it buying it, you know, whatever the case may be. That's pretty much it, guys. I actually had a subscriber commenting, asking about this today. He had a vehicle, uh, somebody swapped it for him, and he had been watching my video on how to make them run on the stand and asked if there was a way to do it in the truck. So here you go. I hope this helps. And uh, for everybody else, maybe this will help you too. Especially if you're in the junkyard, I mean, all you would need is a booster pack and a paper clip and you could start these things up in the junkyard to hear them run before you pull them. And, uh, hey, you know, good little tips. The more you know, right? So I'm going to get inside before this thunderstorm starts. I appreciate all of you watching. It's been a ton of new subscribers recently. I really appreciate all of you as well. Along with the old subscribers, thanks all of you who've been here for a while now. And uh, until the next video, everybody, take care.